Okie dokie, I shall try and carry on from somewhere in one of those little videos where I left off. I wanted to talk about using things that are just common household items which would normally get thrown away into the recycling bin. Um, because part of the aim of me doing what I do is to try to encourage anybody with any means whatsoever to make a start on making quite beautiful things. And one of the things that we have a lot of around, I suppose, is plastic. And this is the, an empty um, milk carton. I chose the milk carton because it's a nice translucent um, kind of creamy white. So what I would do, to show you, is cut some bits like that. Make sure that the um, all the water is off and then cut them into little squares like this. A bit bigger, and then make a little hole through the centre like that. So do a few of those. <laughs> it's very satisfying knowing things are going to go and transform themselves into something quite pretty. Um, what I've been doing, I've also been cutting some circular ones out with one of these little presses, but it actually seems to give up the ghost after not many goes. Um, I suppose it's only meant for paper and not really meant for plastic. But it's, it's rather nice to just cut them out roughly by hand, I think. What I was doing there is just sticking them on one of these um, little eye pins, which I use a lot of when I'm making um, pendant bales and things in papier-mâché. And also I've got... Uh, a tube of these little, um, well they're quite large actually, um, glass beads with a silver centre. I think they're called bugles. I'm not an expert really, I don't think, at anything. And I have got some of these tiny little ones which I believe are called seed beads. So, what I did, um, just to recap, what I did before was make lots of these little flowers. Actually that one's not up to much and I put resin on the back so that they became quite translucent and make quite a little sound. Um, I've also been putting a little bit more tissue paper on some of them so that they're even more translucent. See? And what I, I'll just show you how I did that. I basically cut out some or ripped some rough flower shapes out of bits of tissue paper that I just have around but it comes in with everything Lo loads of things get wrapped up in tissue paper so what I would do would be just water down some PVA glue and working on a tile paint on the tile and paint on then you get both sides done then take one of one of these and lift up the corner so it's like that and then just stick it on the back, like so. Now, if I want that to dry, what I might be inclined to do is get a um, kebab stick. Oh, I was going to say, sometimes with the kebab sticks, what I do is I push them through a drinking straw, like so. It's quite a, a nifty way to do it. I'll use it on this because it just means that it doesn't stick to the wood quite so easily. And then I'll put that to dry somewhere. Actually, that's just jammed in nicely, so that can kind of go anywhere. All sorts of little crevices get <laughs> used. Um, so that will just add a different angle to them. What I've been doing is I've been making them into little flowers. Now listen, I don't normally do anything quite so delicate, pretty or twee. Well, not really twee, but you know, I, I've kind of got an idea where I'm going with these now, sort of. So what I've done here, I will show you, is I have taken one of these little eye pins on which I've stuck, yeah, stuck a bead and then I have been layering the tissue paper one on top of the other 
and drawing it off here so it's lay just layers then what I would do is I just rip it like that and again you know, into lots of little pieces these are the kind of things you can just get on with when you haven't really got much else to do so and then make little squares out of them these haven't been done very long so they're a bit um, a bit fresh and make a hole through them like I did with the other ones do a couple of those and then take the bead and push it through there so it makes that effect and I've got this glue which I'm just trying out it's um it's called 3d glue it doesn't smell very nice I have to say and um, I've been just using a kebab stick to dab it on with like that and putting it the reason I'm using 3d glue is because I hope it will give me a bit of height because it's meant to dry as 3d glue and then the next one I can push through there too. Yeah, you see how it just gives me distance and a gap. And then put some more on the back of that one. Just dig it in the end of the tube and pull it out. And then take one of these flowers. They were calling them flowers, I mean, they're not flowers, are they? But they could be. And push it in with the other end of the stick so that they don't squash it all, but it's quite firm. I might even put a bit of glue actually underneath the bead so the bead is sort of stuck down too. And then what I'll do is bend that over like like so, uh, like so, and then put it anywhere really just to form it and, and let it dry off. Oops. So I'm trying to make a few of these and I've sort of got in my mind a necklace developing. Um, the same thing can be done with these because I've also layered them, the squares of the layered tissue paper with PVA glue and the milk bottle um, things that are chopped up and they're really nice actually, Ooh, I don't know if you can see there but it's got, and I, I've got an idea here that they might sort of work in conjunction with these just playing around with texture translucency and then of course there are the, these beads as well, which um, for handling, I've been cutting the end off a, a I think they're called Q-tips, aren't they? Just for handling, so the iridescent beads. I can start to think what I'm going to do with those as well. I'm playing around with those. Eight minutes already, so I'm going to pause it or stop it and see if I can maybe carry on with the next video instead of making loads of separate videos. See you in a while.